I won't invite you to the wedding. If it were me, I wouldn't disclose personal information to a fake father. Irvin's eldest son and his wife sneered at him with contempt. To Irvin's frozen disbelief, his eldest son delivered even more shocking words. I've always found you, my stepfather repulsive. I want nothing to do with you from now on. Taking a deep breath, Urban braced himself. I see. That's unfortunate. You are no longer my son. My name is Urban. I'm a single father who will turn 55 years old this year. I have two sons, Aaron, my eldest son, who is 24 years old, and Isaac, my youngest son, who is 22 years old. The truth is, they are not biologically related to me. They are my late wife's stepchildren. When I married my wife, Aaron was six years old and Isaac was four years old. Initially, they probably saw me as just a playful uncle figure. But gradually, we formed a bond and closed the distance between us. Eight years ago, When my wife passed away from an illness, her parents offered to take the boys. However, I made the decision to raise them as their father. Being solely responsible for them as a man has been challenging, but I've managed to raise my sons. And then, last month, I received joyful news from Aaron, who had graduated from college and was living on his own. It turns out he has decided to marry a woman named Annabelle, whom he had been in a relationship with for a while. I genuinely felt happy upon hearing this news and was filled with deep emotions. My little child, who used to be so small, is already getting married. Even Isaac, my younger son, was genuinely delighted about his brother's marriage. Hey, big bro! It seems like you'll be coming back here soon. I heard you want to know the day when dad will be here. Is it for wedding greeting? I see. I've met Annabelle a few times, but I'm nervous when it comes to greetings. What's the use of you being nervous, dad? As it is a family wedding, both Isaac and I were in high spirits. We eagerly anticipated the day when the two would visit their childhood home. That day was a sunny Sunday. Around 3 p.m., the two arrived at the doorbell. We had prepared high quality cookies, bought for this occasion, and brewed fancy tea received from a friend, placing them on the table. We all took our seats and engaged in some light hearted conversation when Aaron cleared his throat. So, I have some news to share today. Finally, the moment has come. I'm getting married to Annabelle. We will register our marriage next month, and the wedding ceremony will be held in six months. I see. Congratulations to both of you. Annabelle, take good care of my brother. Isaac and I simultaneously expressed our blessings. With the warm weather and a happy topic, the atmosphere felt brighter in our usual living room. However, that air quickly changed with one sentence from our room. Well, the reason I came back today is to cut ties with you, Dad. Huh? Cut ties? Aaron's words were suddenly unbelievable. It was a sudden revelation that I couldn't comprehend. As I remained silent, Isaac interjected beside me. Hey, what are you talking about, bro? Cutting ties? Just because you're getting married doesn't mean you are not family anymore, right? That's exactly why I came here to tell you. I've never considered this man as my father. Huh? Isaac sent my eyes wide in shock at my brother's revelation. In a panic, I quickly responded. Hey, Aaron, what do you mean by that? We've been supporting each other as a family all this time. Granted, I may not have been reliable. If you were to ask me if I've been a good father, I can't confidently say yes, 
but I've done my best to be a father to you, Aram. That's exactly what annoys me. Acting like a father when you are not even my real father. Once I marry Annabelle, I have no intention of having anything to do with you. That's why I came here to tell you. It's not a joke then. I thought he came to announce his marriage and meet me as he had been eager to know the date. I never expected my own son to declare a complete severance of our relationship. Aaron's agitated voice shocks me. I can't afford to lose my composure in front of my son's fiance. Somehow, I managed to maintain my dignity and turn to Aaron. I never thought I'd be so hated by you. That's how it is. Don't bother coming to the wedding. Well, not that I was planning on inviting you anyway. That's not right, bro. It's none of your business. They are just two brothers. I can't let them drift apart because of me. I desperately tried to stop Isaac from escalating the situation and direct a serious gaze at Aaron. All right, I won't attend the wedding. And if you don't want me to be involved in your life from now on, I respect that. Is that okay with you? You're quite quick with your response. At least tell me where you are living, just in case something happens and I need to help you. Annabelle, who had been silent until now, suddenly speaks up in response to my words. If it were me, I wouldn't share personal information with a fake father. We can manage on our own, so we don't need any help. Fake father? If you're not the real father, then essentially you are fake. A fake father is just like a stranger. I can't bring myself to give my address to someone like that. Being cut off and called a fake is already quite shocking. But hearing those words from my eldest son's fiancé adds even more damage. I can barely remain seated. The blow is almost too much to bear. Aaron directed a contemptuous smile at me. That's why I won't tell you my address. Both Annabelle and I don't want anything to do with you, repulsive as you are. Repulsive? With those words, I resigned myself to the situation. Taking a deep breath, I made my announcement to them. I see. How unfortunate. If you are going to say that much, there's nothing more to be done. My only son is Isaac. You are no longer my son. Don't ever contact me again. Father! Isaac's voice trembled with tears. But I had no intention of retracting my words. Ignoring the distraught Isaac, Arrow stood up, looking satisfied. Who said I would ever contact you? Don't worry, I have no intention of ever letting you hear my voice again. Brother! Well then, Isaac, find the right time and get rid of that person quickly. Arrow left without turning back, but instead, Annabelle sent me a disapproving glance. With the two of them gone, silence returned to the room. Despite the weather being no different than before, the living room suddenly felt darker. Afterward, as they had said, days passed without any contact from Aaron. And it wasn't just that. Isaac, too, became unresponsive and cut off contact with Irvin. It's regrettable that it turned out this way, but there was nothing more I could do. Gradually, Aaron's name ceased to come up in conversations, and this situation without Aaron became the new normal. Several years had passed since I cut ties with my eldest son. Then, out of the blue, Aaron and his wife showed up in front of me as if nothing had happened. It was the day after Isaac's wedding, following the joyous occasion and the celebration of my son's new chapter, I was still immersed in the afterglow. It was at that moment when the doorbell rang. Looking at the intercom camera, I couldn't help but feel startled. Why were the two of them here? 
as I stood frozen in place, a voice bellowed through the intercom. We know you are in there. If you don't come out now, I'll cause the same right here and now. The words Aaron spat out were reminiscent of a debt collector leaving me startled. This could become a newer sense to the neighborhood. Thinking so, I reluctantly pressed the intercom button. Who is it? Huh? It's your firstborn, Aaron. That should be obvious. It's been years, hasn't it? Under normal circumstances, one might have been overjoyed and overwhelmed with emotion at the reunion with their long lost son. But in my heart, only quiet anger smoldered. I don't have a son named Aaron. Are you sure you have the right address? What? Are you mocking me? I heard it from an old friend from middle school. I'm certain. I bought this house as a wedding gift for Isaac. He contacted me several times, but he had changed his phone number and I couldn't reach him by email or phone. So, that's how he found out. Isaac planned to invite him to the wedding, but without knowing his whereabouts, he moved to this apartment without informing Aaron about the marriage or the new address. I wondered how Aaron found out, but his words provided an explanation. Many of Isaac's middle school classmates attended the wedding, so he must have heard from someone there. Ignoring the inconvenience to the neighbors, Aaron continued to raise his voice. Why did you move without telling me? What happened to the house you lived in? I saw that house. Originally, I had no intention of living in this apartment. But Isaac insisted that we live together here, so we decided to live together. I don't care about that. Why does Isaac get a wedding gift? But I don't. Isn't that discrimination? Although I wanted nothing more than to engage in a full-blown argument and kick them out, I didn't want to cause the same for Isaac's sake. Instead, I exerted pressure in a low voice. What's wrong with the sending a wedding gift to my son? That's why I'm saying, give me a wedding gift too, as your eldest son. Normally, the eldest son should be prioritized. So, why does my younger brother Isaac get this fancy apartment, while I, the eldest son, get nothing? Silence lingered, and I could hear Aaron clicking his tongue through the intercom. You still hold a grudge for not being invited to the wedding? Even as an adult, you are still dwelling on the past. Pathetic. How long are you going to suck? Accept me as your son already and give me a wedding gift. His selfish remarks made me sigh unintentionally. Annabelle approached the intercom camera, bringing her face close to me. Father-in-law, let's put the past behind us, okay? Aaron responded with a loud, that's right. Why looking up at the camera with Annabelle's cozy gaze? Their audacity finally triggered the anger that had been simmering within me. They really underestimated me. They have no idea how devastated I was at that time. I'll make them face reality. I lowered my voice even further. Is that why you came all the way here to say that? Huh? Annabelle couldn't hide her surprise at the sudden change in my voice. As Annabelle remained speechless, Aaron retorted, Yeah, that's right. I came to receive a wedding gift. As a father, you should celebrate both your sons equally without the favoritism, right? You told me you never considered yourself a father at that time. You said you wanted to serve the ties. And I agreed. You were the one who gave up on being a father first, weren't you? Don't start favoring one son over the other now. Cut the nonsense. But in some fear, why does Isaac get this luxurious apartment when we didn't have that kind of money? Why? Aaron's words intensified my anger even farther. In the end, he only cared about this apartment. I confronted Aaron with the truth. 
You hardly ever came home after entering university. You never bothered to listen to me. So maybe you don't know, but I changed jobs. Huh? How does changing jobs relate to a fancy apartment? You are still an underpaid salaryman, right? Calling it a job change may be misleading. I study my own business. Huh? You study the business? So, when Aaron graduated from college, I started a business with a friend. It's a company focused on trade where my friend handles procurement and I handle sales in Japan. The business is doing well and my salary has multiplied several times compared to my previous job. The tea I prepared on the day Aaron brought Annabelle was a gift from that friend when he returned his home country. Since Isa continued to live at home after finding a job, he knew about my work. Aaron was the only one who didn't know. Unable to accept reality, Aaron began to look down on me. Starting a business, it's not like it's a big company anyway. There's no way a guy like you can be a president. If that's what you think, then so be it. But the fact remains that I purchased this mansion. Speaking of which, you said you sold the family home, right? You probably used that money, didn't you? Annabelle immediately interjected in response to Aaron's remark. If you sold the family home, Aaron should also get his fair share. Not content with just looking down on me, they even brought up inheritance. Seeing Aaron and Annabelle's despicable behavior, I couldn't hold back my anger. You've been making noise about this and that for a while now. How much longer will you keep ridiculing people? Huh? W wait a minute. My full language clearly unsettled Aaron, but my momentum couldn't be stopped. I gave all the money from selling the family home to Isaac. I bought this mansion with the money I earned myself. All by yourself? That's right. Besides, why would someone who's not even my son get a share? It's laughable. But, but even if you say that, Aaron is your son, isn't he? Even in a state of estrangement, he should have inheritance rights. Unlike Aaron, Annabelle didn't waver in her combativeness. She must have done some research before coming here. But I haven't grown old enough to be easily defeated by superficial knowledge. Regardless of estrangement or anything else, Aaron has no inheritance rights. He's just a stranger. That's why he's not a stranger. Aaron is your son. And he's the eldest, right? We never went through the process of adoption, so Aaron has no inheritance rights. Adoption? What's that? Perhaps because she heard an unfamiliar term, Annabelle seemed slightly irritated. To her, I calmly explained the meaning. Aaron is my wife's child. We have no blood relation. Only spouses or blood relatives can inherit. Though, whether Aaron wants to serve ties or not, he never had any inheritance rights to begin with. Wait, I don't quite understand. Go home and look it up. Anyway, Aaron has no inheritance rights, and I have no intention of explaining it further. Please leave. Now, Aaron started to protest, taking over from Annabelle. If that's the case, then Isaac shouldn't have any inheritance rights either. Yet, you bought a condo for Isaac. It's unfair. A father should treat his children equally. Even if they are estranged, you are a terrible father. Irvin, feeling not just angry but also exasperated, couldn't even be bothered with such a person. Isaac is my only son, without any inheritance rights. I have no business being called a terrible father by a complete stranger like you. No way! That's right, no way. I legally adopted Isaac. My parents have already passed away, and I have no siblings. When my wife passed away, 
there were no other heirs, so I would think about what to do. And then you came and severed ties, so I adopted Isaac to grant him inheritance rights. That, through the intercom, Aaron's shoulders slumped, and he gazed into the distance. Then Annabelle clung to me, seeking help. But we can still go through with the adoption, right? Since I've come back here today, please adopt me, Aaron. We've lived as a family for so many years, haven't we? He said he never considered me his father. Never once thought of me as family. Put yourself in my shoes. It's too late for adoption now. Just because you've come back, I have no son named Aaron. My son is only Isaac. Hopeless, Annabel started berating Aaron. It's all your fault. If you hadn't brought up severing ties, we could have inherited his money. What are you going to do about it? Without hesitation, I scolded her. Annabel, didn't you call me a fraud? Yet now you claim you're not at fault and that it's all Aaron's doing. Well, that's enough. Get out of here with Aaron. Eventually, they started fighting in front of the entrance, so I called the police. The officers arrived quickly, and ultimately, the two of them were taken away. After that, they came to the front of the condo a few more times, but I ignored them completely, and eventually, they stopped showing up altogether. I don't know where they are or what they are doing now. Arun is a complete stranger to me. I have no intention of getting involved. I continue to devote myself to work. I will further grow the company and live a happy life with my son and daughter-in-law.